There were some things we did learn from that news briefing, and some of them, uh, to me, very fascinating details. Uh, for one, we can say, or the authorities can say with some assurance, that there are no secondary devices they are aware of. So they're pretty confident that there won't be another explosion. And Molly, I thought the headline there yeah. was that when they got that 911 call and arrived on the scene, the RV, the suspicious RV, had a recording that a bomb yeah. would be detonating within 15 minutes and officers were clearing buildings in the area when it actually did explode. Yeah, that absolutely answered one of the big questions we had as to what exactly was so suspicious when the officers got there that they needed to call in the bomb squad about an RV on Christmas morning and a, and a recording warning that in 15 minutes there will be a bomb is a pretty clear indication that you need to call in the bomb squad. And those yeah. officers are heroes. That is something that the chief there acknowledged just a few moments ago. We think lives were saved. Those officers took the time, the limited amount of time they were potentially led to believe they had uh, from this recording to get people in that area, those residential apartment buildings, and get people out, and lives were saved. We know the officers, yeah. at least one, was so close when the explosion occurred that they were literally blown off their feet. We've also had a report that another officer, potentially the same officer, we're not sure, uh, may have suffered some hearing loss as well. So yeah, the really, explosion was, was deafening. We, I saw some video on, on, uh, on social media uh, of the actual event itself. And, I, and I've talked to people who live in the area who were literally rocked out of their beds, and we hope to get them on uh, sometime this, this afternoon. Um, we do know that the FBI and ATF are taking the lead on this, and I can tell you the FBI's uh, uh, evidence response team is very, very good at collecting the little shreds on the ground there that could lead them uh, to the clue they need to determine who exactly did this. And we heard from uh, Metro PD there that they don't know if someone was actually in that RV when it detonated, and they are going building to building to see if there might be more victims and also to ensure that those buildings are structurally sound. Let's bring back David Katz, a former U.S. federal agent. David, was there anything that you heard in that news briefing that stood out to you? <laughs> well, yeah, you mentioned it, the recording. You know, I was trying to rack my brain. I was going to say, you know, this this is, whoever this cop was, this was Lieutenant Colombo. You know, was he looking at, you know, depressed shocks? Was he looking at lack of a plate proximity to the building? We roll up, and now you get a recording that says this vehicle is going to explode in 15 minutes. And by the way, you know, thanks for taking the time to mention the heroic actions of the of the officers. Every miscreant who starts chanting defund the police and you know all that nonsense, look at those folks. They say, they yeah. clearly saved lives. No doubt. Now the FBI also said there's a lot of investigative detail that they cannot simply cannot reveal for obvious reasons. Yeah, sure. Um, but they also did mention all of the cameras in the area. What what will they be looking for now? Well, they're going to look, in addition to the cameras, which will, will show, hopefully, the vehicle being pulled in, and, of course, if anyone got out of the vehicle and where they went. That's number one. Number two, every major metropolitan area has license plate readers and a whole variety of other technological devices that can pinpoint location and proximity. So, for example, if that vehicle had plates, they're going to roll past some, some like in New York City, for example, a lot of the patrol cars have license plate readers. Bridges have them, tunnels have them. So you may be able to identify how the, how the vehicle came in, but more importantly, where it came from. There is no doubt in my mind they will retrieve, they will retrieve enough enough evidence to identify uh, the vehicle by, by the VIN number. And uh, I have I have a, a high high sense of probability that they also will be able to put put an identity to the person behind the wheel. Well, the most fascinating element here is that this person had a recording on the RV, drew police in, and then played a recording warning of an explosion. That is not typical behavior uh, for a terrorist. I mean, there will be warnings and then no, there's no blast in many cases, or there's a blast with no warnings. In this case, we had a warning and a blast. That's exact. You know who that reminded me of? The, the, the Basque separatists used to do that. Their, their intention was to destroy property, but minimize harm, risk to human life. So you have, in this particular case, you have the vehicle at, at, a, at a very early hour where there's not a lot of street traffic, and then, of course, it gets parked. Now, the ATF, the AT&T AT &T building may or may not have been the target. I would look at AT&T not, not because they're upset with their cell phone service. If there is a, con a connection, it's probably some corporate ownership. We know, uh, you know they have big, big media interests as well. Maybe, I'm sure the FBI is already looking at that. But that action where they're warning Law enforcement. I, I originally that shots fired thing was it seemed like a trap. Draw the police in, then detonate. Well, clearly not. Clearly, something else was going on here that we have, have yet to fully understand. 
David, I yeah. want to talk a little bit about the efforts the FBI have said, have vowed really, we will find out what happened here. And they've called on the public to help with that. They say to go to fbi.gov slash Nashville or 1-800-CALL-FBI. In the wake of the Boston Marathon bombing, the cameras, the pictures of that, that point in time, the unknown suspects, uh, they really pulled the public for help. How could that assist as we're just beginning in this investigation? Well, you could, you know, like, you know, there was a report earlier that a police officer had had uh, had to shoo away someone walking their dog in that area. Well, maybe someone was walking their dog at 5:30 in the morning when that vehicle was pulled up and saw it. There are people who have, you know, we have business businesses have cameras, residential buildings have cameras. People have car cameras in their in their vehicles now. So you're going to ask when you by by asking for public assistance, you know, anyone say, you know, what? I was down there. Maybe I have something, and they they look and they review their footage and say, guess what? There's the RV, and there's hopefully there's a, there's the individual. So that's going to be one thing. Cell phone usage. Was anyone on a cell phone? Was everyone was anyone using their their directional system? Were they using Waze or anyone? If, if there was cell phone activity in that location at that time, they're going to nail it. If the cell phone was used to detonate it, let's say there was line of sight and it was a call in detonation, they're going to nail it. If it was a timer, yeah. they're going to figure it out by the forensics. So this is so early in the investigation. But but again, that 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 recording, that puts a whole different perspective on the whole investigation. And, and, and David, David and Molly, I, I think the other key point here is that this happened at 6.30 on Christmas morning. Um, if this bomber wanted to do to inflict the most damage and the most harm, he would have waited until 6.30 in the evening or in the exactly. middle of the afternoon or maybe last night when there were people up and down Broadway. He, he could have potentially injured and killed scores of people. And clearly this was timed for the for the minimum loss of life. And, you know, based on what we're seeing, uh, the images from the scene there, it could have been horrible. Uh, the, 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 I'm hearing reports of people who were miles away feeling it, being woken up by this blast. It, it rocked downtown Nashville. That is not an exaggeration. No, I was actually I actually stayed in that that, that exact area, you know, back in September. You know, uh, so I, I, I'm quite familiar with it. And you're exactly right. You flip this by 12 hours, you have you have mass casualties at this time in the morning. It's Christmas morning. People are still you know in bed, you know, sleeping off the effects of the night before. So you know, I I, I still am kind of puzzling about the timing of Christmas Day beyond the fact that it's a quiet morning because you could pick any quiet morning. But certainly the, the intention here with that fact you just mentioned, as well as the, the uh, recording, suggests a lack, a lack of intent to do human, harm to human beings, but either just the, the, the physical damage, making a statement, you know, gosh, this is a little, a little bit of a head scratcher so far. Yeah, David, we know that this was a very powerful explosion. We can see the debris in the street, the charred building, what appears to be other melted parts of vehicle. Uh, they're not sure that they will be able to find a body and don't know if someone may have been in that vehicle or not. But we know quite a team has been assembled regarding, you know, they said everything from chemists to certified explosive experts, engineers. Yeah. What are the physical clues they're going to be looking for that might help them find the perpetrator? Oh, they're going to they're going to comb that place is going to be combed with a fine tooth. First of all, any any explosive, whatever the type, is going to leave residue. That's going to be identified. They're going to have this. I mean, I don't think they're going to have it by the end of the day, but they but they may. In addition to that, if it's depending on the nature of the device, it's going to have various components. It's going to have wiring. It's going to have containment. Those those pieces are going to be put together, analyzed. You know, let, let's say this was you know put together with um, you know in, in addition to the explosive wiring that they could trace back. To a particular hardware store, or propane tanks that can go to a to, you know to a local Home Depot, or if it was you know if they if they find it was uh, you know a, a, a nitrous you know ni ni uh, um, a nitrogen oxide um, uh, based explosive, fertilizer based explosive rather, uh, you know, they'll they'll know that as well. But every component, these guys who do this type of work are extraordinarily competent. So I have no yeah. doubt they're going to figure out, you know, almost down to the to the T, yeah. where this came from, what type it was, how it was detonated. They'll know all of this. Right. It's just going to take a little time. David Katz, thank you so much for your insight uh, the, here on this Christmas afternoon. We really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes for us in this pretty important story. Thank you very much.